We still don't have an autopsy report. We still don't have the toxicology report. It's been almost a year since Maurice Gordon Jr. was allegedly shot and killed on the Garden State Parkway by a New Jersey State trooper after being pulled over for allegedly speeding. The family's attorney, William Wagstaff, says they still don't have all the pieces needed to paint a full picture of the 28-year-old's final moments. We still don't have much of the information about any of the officers that arrived at the scene. Don't have any body camera from them if they had it on because Sergeant Wetzel did not. We don't have any audio recordings. What was released in June of 2020 by the Attorney General's office shows scenes leading up to the shooting, like this one of the Dutchess Community College chemistry student in the back of the trooper's car waiting for a tow truck. The reason you're in my car is because you, you keep jumping out. We're in a real bad spot. We're on the side of the highway here. If you look behind us, there's cars everywhere. You know what I mean? I don't want you getting hit. I'm trying to help you out. Your car died. I don't know, it, it, did you run out of gas? The situation quickly escalates when the state trooper offers Gordon Jr. a mask and he ultimately gets out of the car. At no point did the officer tell him that he was under arrest. So for all intents and purposes, Maurice Gordon Jr. should have been free to return to his vehicle. Even if Officer Wetzel felt that there may have been a safety concern, which is legitimate, that could have been handled differently. Attorney Wagstaff says the case has still not been sent to the grand jury, and he's still waiting for evidence from the attorney general's office. That's why on March 11, he says he filed a lawsuit on behalf of Gordon's family against the state of New Jersey, State Trooper Sergeant Randall Wetzel, Attorney General Gabriel Graywall, New Jersey State Police Colonel Patrick Callahan, and other unnamed individuals. And the causes of action in the federal lawsuit are excessive force, wrongful death, conscious pain and suffering. There were several failures by the attorney general's office as well as the head of the state police department and their training and their ability to track the excessive use of force by officers in the state of New Jersey, specifically that excessive use of force when dealing with people of color. In December of 2020, Attorney General Gabir Graywall announced for the first time in more than two decades that the state would be revising its use of force policy, including issuing a ban on all forms of physical and deadly force except as a last resort. The new policy also required all 38,000 officers in New Jersey to complete a two-day de-escalation training by end of 2021 and for any use of force to be logged within 24 hours on a new statewide portal monitored by supervisory officers. I do think that's a step in the right direction. Dr. Jason Williams is an assistant professor of justice studies at Montclair State University. I'm someone who actually does research on this. So I have gone to Ferguson, I've gone to Baltimore following Mike Brown and Freddie Gray. The only way really to remedy some of these behaviors is through consequences on the job. We reached out to New Jersey State Police, but they said they do not comment on pending litigation. The Attorney General's office says the criminal case is pending presentation to the grand jury because at present, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, regular grand juries are not sitting and hearing cases. William Wagstaff wants an independent prosecutor to be appointed now that he has named the State Attorney General in a civil case. I'm Leah Mishkin. NJ Spotlight News.